All right, I'm going to read this letter now. Um, it's interesting how the Lord works things out because literally, like I said in the previous video, as I was getting into this whole, you know, going to do a study on this contemporary Christian music, the philosophy of it and everything else, um, the Lord oftentimes will give another witness. He'll, he'll, you know, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And there's been so many times that I'm thinking about doing a study or I do a study and somebody else comes along and says, I saw the exact same thing and I was studying the Bible. It's really wild that you brought this up. Yeah, the Holy Spirit will do that. Okay. And right here, I'm going to show you the postmark on this. I'm not going to show this guy's address. I got it covered with my hands there. But 15th of May. Hopefully you can see that right there. going to read this letter. I'll have to omit some parts if there's anything personal in here. Um, Dear Brother Ryan, I thank the Lord for leading me to your ministry. I have really been blessed by it. I'm enclosing a donation to help with the relocation of the ministry office. And thank you for that. Also, I am including my testimony. I love to hear testimonies. It's always one of my favorite things. I was a professing childhood convert from the time I was five years old. I grew up in a conservative Baptist family. My dad was a Sunday school teacher and later served as a deacon in the church building where I grew up. I was taught that you had to go to church. So I was in the Awana program and looking back now, even in the mid-1990s, they were using New King James Version readings. Uh, I think that Awana, at, years ago, they were offered in three different versions, King James, New King James, and NIV. It's probably changed by now. That was many years ago, but uh, we didn't know any better. The ecumenical stuff started creeping in, and when I got into junior high, we got a brand new youth pastor that brought in Christian rock, being like the world to gain the world, no repentance and new versions. Exactly. Again, that's one of the big philosophies. One of the, uh, just got to stray here for a minute uh, off the point or off this letter here. Um, again, what was the original philosophy behind the new versions? Well, in order to reach the youth, we have to give them what they want. We have to be like the world to win the world. See, Christian rock, Christian contemporary music, was all about um, evangelism. Okay, Now, there's not one verse of Scripture that says that you're supposed to evangelize the lost with music. Not one verse. Uh, music in the life of a, of a born-again believer is glorifying the Lord. Okay, That's what it's supposed to be there for. But we'll get to that in another thing here. But... What put me off to the whole church thing was how fake everyone was. <laughs> cool. You know, yeah. Those of us that were raised going to church, um, we saw the fakeness. We saw the, the hypocrisy. We saw, you know, we've all, we can all testify to that. That, you know, there were problems, there were sins, and if the family was high up enough in the church and donating enough, if they were big tithers, the problem got swept under the rug. And it doesn't matter where you went to. Baptist, independent Bible, Mennonite, whatever kind of conservative Christian type of thing. doesn't matter. I started listening to classic rock. Notice how it happens? If you saw the other video, CCM comes in and you listen to secular music but ignore the words. It happens every single time. There was even an old uh, contemporary Christian rock music. Well, I guess it wasn't really rock, but it was kind of a contemporary, I don't know what you'd call it, upbeat pop music or something. I don't know. But uh, back when I was a young man, and it was, it was Why Does the Devil Have All the Good Music? Is literally, literally what the song was called. I don't know who sang it or whatever. It's been so many years ago. But, but uh, the youth pastor brings in Christian rock, starts listening to classic rock. Same thing happened to me. Exactly. Then I graduated from high school, went to community college. I started using chewing tobacco there and got drunk for the first time. I never really had any conviction of sin. About this time, my family left the Baptist church I had grown up in and started attending a more conservative Bible church. I would attend occasionally. Then I started working at, working at an auto parts store. After a while, I started hanging out with some of the older guys who worked there and they drank beer, so I started drinking with them then later on started smoking pot, all the while thinking I was saved because I had prayed the prayer. Then my parents and my aunt tried to get me to quit all the things I was doing, but I didn't want to. 
Later, I wanted to quit the chewing tobacco, but I didn't see how I could. Then I got fired from the job at the parts store and got a job at a different store that paid less. I worked there for a while, then my current job opened up at a car, car dealership. I was put in a truck to go to a town about an hour away from where I live to go pick up parts, so I get five hours a day alone. I was getting drunk and stoned every night. Then one night, about early March last year, I realized that this way of life wasn't what I wanted. I asked my parents to pray for me to get off the drugs and booze. Every time I would go around them, I would break down crying because the Holy Spirit was convicting me, and I had hurt them deeply with the direction of my life had taken. The Lord was working on me, and it all came to a head at my aunt's funeral last April. I was listening to the salvation message as if it was for the first time. I was grieved over my sin, and I surrendered my life to the Lord to to the Lord Jesus that day. He took away the desire for alcohol and drugs that very instant. I was on a spiritual high for a month. I had a ravenous desire to read the Bible. I was immersing myself listening to the radio preachers, and I was like everyone uses uh, different. And, and he said, "Okay, I was like everyone uses different Bibles." The Lord had me destroy all my rock records. Same thing I did. But some of you out there, you per profess to be Christians and saved and no conviction of that, I guess, right? Wrong. My dad had me go to a liberal ESV cult building as a test to see if I was really saved. I was, I was like, what is this junk? This is like a rock concert I was going to before. The Holy Spirit told me to leave and never go back. I went through a period of intense spiritual attacks that lasted several days. The spirits had me thinking I had blasphemed the Holy Spirit and I had shipwrecked my faith, but the Lord was showing me how to use the shield of faith and don't drop your guard. The Lord took my uncle last June and helped me quit chewing tobacco completely. Later in August, we had a guy come into the church building while we were attending that worked with Wycliffe. He brought a presentation about translating the Bible to other languages. He was talking about how we had over 30 different English versions and that grieved my spirit, but I wasn't sure why. As I look back, it was another step in my journey to the Bible version issue. Last September, our church had a booth at the state fair that is in conjunction with Bearing Precious Seed, local church Bible publishers. That's one of their ministries. We were putting together copies of the Gospel of John and Romans and handing them out. This experience really opened my eyes. There was one guy that came to the booth that was a proponent of the NIV. He was talking to the guy running the booth and told the little joke about the King James, that if it was good enough for Paul, it was good enough for me. I asked the Lord to guide me to the truth. I remember my dad had some old chick tracks and Crusader comics, so I ordered all the comics they had available and ran into David Daniels' videos on the Bible version issue. It was good, stu good stuff for the most part. Then back last October, the Lord had me search for the best KJV Bible. Then your video came up. The Fellowship of the Spirit was there, and I started watching more and more of your videos. Your ministry got me straightened out on the Godhead versus Trinity issue, natural health, church buildings, dispensations, and what we have been conditioned to accept in society that God hates. The Scorby recordings have been a blessing while I drive for work. Yeah, they are very good. I am also glad that you don't shy away from the more controversial topics, i.e. interracial marriage, the pharmaceutical industry, baloney virus, etc. I can only imagine how vexed you are by the whole situation we are in. Um, and then he says that uh, he still struggles with something. I won't go into that. And we are praying for you. Okay, just to let you know. But thank you very much for the letter. But again, interesting how the Lord worked that out. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I didn't plan this. You saw the postmark. I'm preparing to come out and attack the whole modern CCM movement. Um, and I get a letter from a guy I don't know in, uh, you know, another state. And it says exactly what I believe and exactly what happened to me. I didn't get into the drugs and alcohol and stuff, thankfully, but I certainly got into a lot of other stuff as a result of the rock music. It is wicked. That stuff is bad. And the, the CCM stuff will pull you right down into the secular. I've seen it happen so many times. Um, again, I know uh, my oldest brother. He's still a Christian rocker. Had a Christian rock band, heavy metal band for years. And, you know, helping him move the one time. And he's got Metallica records and all these other secular records. And, well, I'm just studying the style. I'm just studying the lyrics. Not the, I don't listen to the lyrics. I just study the style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
they're, it, it's indefensible, brethren. Um, you're listening to that stuff. You're not right with God, like I said. So I'm going to come back with another video. Um, uh, I'll link down in the description box or maybe at the end or something. Um, there was a, uh, years ago, there was a, a rock concert, basically, across the road from us at Bridgewater. And um, I went out and I, you know, preached against it because it was wicked. It was just, it was horrible. So if you haven't seen that, you can watch the video. But we'll be back in the third video in this little quick series here on why CCM is wrong. And I'm um, going to show you some questions for you if you're one of these Christian rockers. Okay? See you in the next video.